Welcome to the Lord's service to us by way of his name, word, and with his very body and blood. A couple of announcements this morning. First of all, please join us between services for a time of fellowship in the lounge. At 9.30, uh, adults will then meet in the gym for a Bible study on the transfiguration of our Lord. That's today, um, we'll be, which we are celebrating today. Also, the Sunday school opening is in the gym at that same time, and then after the brief opening, the Sunday school students go on to their classrooms. The new member class meets in the fellowship hall. The high school class meets in the computer room. Please join us in the study of God's word. Also, we ask that you join us this Wednesday for our Ash Wednesday service. This kicks off the, the Lenten season, and you, uh, there are services at either 10 a.m., or 6.30 p.m. There is a soup luncheon after the 10 a.m. service, and our PTL is hosting the Ash Wednesday evening soup supper beginning at 5.30 in the gym. Uh, a free will donation will be taken. Trinity Day School children will not be attending the 10 a.m. service for Ash Wednesday uh, so that their families may worship together at the 6.30 p.m. service so that uh, later services when the children will be um, at the... Uh, midweek Ash Wednesday service. The imposition of ashes will also be offered at both services. Next Sunday, March 1st, Trinity is honored to host the Contarai from Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. They will be sharing their music at both services next Sunday. We are the first stop on their 2020 Lenten tour. Our guest organist on March 1 is Contour Matthew Machamer. And the Contrari is also doing a concert at St. John Lutheran Church in Plymouth at 6 p.m. on that same day. One other note, Trinity has been asked by Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, to host a German foreign exchange student, Marcus Bucinius, as a summer vicar. I met him when I was there um, a, a week ago. Uh, his English is uh, fantastic. He cannot take a salary due to visa restrictions, but would like the experience of working with he us here at Trinity. All we need to do is find a place for him to stay from June 29th to August 30th. That's a change of the dates from the bulletin, June 29th to August 30th. If you are interested, please contact me at the church office. The service this morning is found on the panel of your bulletin. The best way to follow along is simply put your bulletin in the back of your hymnal and then go to the page indicated. A couple of uh, notes for today. The gradual, the choir is doing that in the late service. Also the hymn of the day, the choir is doing that in the late service, so we sing all of the verses of the hymn of the day. The green sheet is there for you, has readings for today, notes on the divine service and uh, devotion uh, form to work through through the week. Today, again, is a festival, the transfiguration of our Lord, where our, our Lord shows his glory that he is God himself in the flesh. So there is a uh, procession which accents the fact that he comes among us wherever we gather in his name to hear his word, to celebrate his sacrament. He is among us with all of the company of heaven giving his gifts. Please stand, greet one another. Uh, the bells will call us to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Please kneel for confession and absolution. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord is from Exodus chapter 24. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God, and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone, which, with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction." So Moses rose up with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God, and he said to the elders, wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations, extol him, all peoples, for great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. The epistle is from 2 Peter chapter 1. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, 
This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. This morning's sermon is taken from the gospel lesson with special emphasis on the following words. A bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the definition of identity is who you are. The way you think about yourself, the way you are viewed by the world, and the characteristics that define you. An example of a person's identity is his or her name. The transfiguration of our Lord is about Jesus' identity. It's about seeing Jesus for who he is, the Son of God. Now, God is the one who reveals his identity, the identity of Jesus, to Peter, James, and John. It's not the other way around. Jesus leads them up the mountain. The voice comes not from inside the heart, it comes from outside of them, from heaven, the God who created them and sent his son to redeem them in Christ. That's who reveals the identity of Jesus, the creator of everything that exists. Likewise, if you remember in the Old Testament, Moses does not name God. God reveals his name to Moses. And what does he say? He says, tell him, I am sent you. God is. Always was, is, and will be. The identity of God and your identity does not come from you. It's revealed to us by God. And I want you to think about what's going on in our culture today in relation to that. And I want you to listen very closely. Much of our current culture is deceived by what is commonly called postmodernism. I know that's a big word, but I'm going to unpack it for you. Most postmodernists hold one or more of the following views. You ready? They say there is no objective reality. That's another way of saying nothing is real. It's all a, a projection. Two, there is no scientific or historical truth, no objective truth. That's a tenet of postmodern thought. Three, science and technology and even reason and logic are not vehicles of human progress, but suspect instruments of established power. Reason and logic, they say, are conceptual concept used by people with power to reign over you. That's why a politician can say these words, and I quote, facts are immoral. This politician says <laughs> that facts are just used against you. They're, they have nothing to do with reality. That's absurd. But that's how deceived our world and culture is today. A poem by Max Ehrman called Desert Dorada, Latin for Things Desired. I think that's an interesting title. Interesting title, Things Desired. He has a sentence in that little poem that expresses a popular anthropocentric view of God, popular postmodern view of God. He says, quote, his advice to you is, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive of him to be. Now I want you to think. Whatever you conceive of him to be. In other words, in this belief system, you determine the identity of God and whether or not you are at peace with him or whatever he is. You control everything. Now isn't this what was desired in the Garden of Eden? To be God. Adam and Eve believed the lie that we are God. And by the way, in our culture, this 21st century culture, <laughs> nothing's changed. There's this idea that somehow we're in charge, that we control everything, that we can simply have this concept and, and make it work and make it real and make it the reality. 
Now, following this train of thought would also mean that you determine your own identity as well, and don't we see that today in our culture? Well, a popular view in our culture of today, this is patently false. And we need to step up to the plate and start telling people that, because that's the truth. It's, this idea, this belief system is false in relationship to God and also in relationship to ourselves. It's popular. You don't think this is popular? In some of our public schools, our grade schools, there are now rules, directives, that if a little boy or comes to you and maybe he's in second or third grade and says, I think I am a girl. The rule is, and by the way, I have the data, I have the information, the rule is, you cannot tell the parents about this little child's confusion. The parents or the legal guardian, you can't tell them. You have to keep that in confidence. And if he wants to go shower and the girls shower, so be it. Those are directives that you can't, those are commandments, if you will, of a secular culture. And by the way, you think things are going to go bad with that? <laughs> they are already. This is not good for the little boy or the little girl or anyone who's in, confused about who they are. This does nothing but make it more confusing. And it does nothing but hurt the very people who are struggling with these issues. That's the facts. And the facts are not immoral. They're true. And the truth hurts, and we need to deal with the truth for the life of the world, for the good of those struggling with this or anything else. You say, this isn't science, Pastor. You're talking, uh, you know, that religious stuff. Really? You ever hear your DNA? <laughs> your DNA, what is that? It's your genetic code. Did you choose it? Did you pick, well, I want these genes, please? No. They were given from outside of you. We need to start speaking up because <laughs> there are people who are seeking to do things to us that are going to be detrimental not to us, but all who buy into these myths of a fallen culture. Now, many people say that matters of faith are in the realm of myth or fairy tale. Well, that's just your religion. Not so. They project their own myths onto us. In the church, we deal with the reality of our sin and the reality of the grace of God who takes on human flesh in reality with witnesses, suffers and dies for the sin of the world, rises victorious over death with witnesses in order to give us a whole new life. Life as God created and redeemed it to be. Notice how the apostle Peter <laughs> refutes the popular notion of a fallen humanity. It speaks to today too, folks. In our epistle lesson, look what he says. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of, him, of his majesty. We were with him on the holy mountain. That's what he said. They were with him on the holy mountain. Just like Moses and Nadab and Aaron and the 70 elders in that Old Testament lesson, they were with him on the holy mountain. Lots of people, lots of people were with him and ate and drank with God. Wow. We ourselves, they said, heard the very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain, eyewitnesses. Then he says, no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. You ever hear that? It drives me crazy. Well, that's your interpretation. You shall not murder. Does that mean you can't take the life of a human being? That's what it means, right? Is there any other interpretation of that? Well, yes, I believe we should, you should not murder, Pastor, but I believe in abortion. That's murder. You should not steal. But what if it's good for me? Then is it okay? You see how it's 
not about interpretation. It's about what's real. Not what you think is real, what you, the way you would do it, but the way it really is. Our Lord, he deals in the realm of reality. Those in postmodern thought are operating in the realm of thinking that they determine who they are, who God is, and then have the chutzpah to say that if you just listen to me, <laughs> everything's going to be great. It's not. And the data proves it. God creates what is real. He's the creator. He created you real flesh and blood and took on your real flesh and blood in order to redeem it. Jesus is the I am. He just is. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and end. Everything begins and ends with God. Jesus is. And you know what the great thing is? He is for you. Jesus was transfigured before Peter, James, and John, and his face, we hear, shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And there appeared to him Moses and Elijah talking to him. Moses, a figure from history, the lawgiver, saying, yeah, he fulfills the law. He's the only one who follows every commandment in thought, word, and deed. You break them all, whether it be thought, word, or deed. He's the one. Jesus is the one. He's the Christ. And Elijah is there, the prophet of prophets. This is the one we were talking about who would make things right with God and one another for the life of the world. This is the one. And then what does Peter say? He goes, oh, Lord, it is good that we are here. Wow, that is good. They are with God on the holy mountain with Moses and Elijah and Abraham and, and all of those who have gone before us in the faith because wherever Jesus is, heaven and earth intersect. That's what's proclaimed here. That's the reality. They are with him on the mountain. But so are you here today. A voice from the cloud said, remember that? This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. He's your creator. He's your redeemer. He's the wisdom from on high. You're not. I'm not. Listen to him. He's the human being as we human beings were meant to be. And what does he say to you today? Hey, take eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood. And what do you do? You eat and drink with God on his holy mountain. And you receive his forgiveness, his life, and peace. You behold him by means of his word. They, in our text, fell on their faces and were terrified. By the way, you're not terrified if this is all symbolic stuff. You're not terrified by non-reality. You're terrified when you confront God himself. But God comes to confront you in the flesh. And that's why he says, rise and have no fear. Jesus says the same thing to you. Have no fear. I've just forgiven your sins. I've just taken away everything that God or anyone else could hold against you. You're free. You're free. And when their eyes lifted up, or when they lifted up their eyes, what did they see? No one but Jesus only. Nothing better than that. Jesus only. He's the I am. Emmanuel, which means? He's the Christ, which means? Uh, ooh, don't know that one as well. He's the anointed one. In other words, he's set apart to be with us. And his name is Jesus, which means God saves. He is set apart to be with us, to save us in reality. God is not whatever you conceive of him to be, nor are you. The identity of God is revealed to us in Jesus, the Son of God. And our Lord created you by his word, redeemed you with his death and resurrection. And he comes to you right here and right now by his spirit at work through his word to forgive your sins, to renew your faith, to give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus is the Christ. That's who he is. Listen to him. And listen to 
what he says to you right here and now. Peace be with you. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our lives in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. It is good that we are here, O Lord, upon the holy mountain of your presence. Hear us as we pray for your church throughout the world, for each of us according to our needs, and for all people everywhere. Almighty God, on the Mount of Transfiguration, you revealed your Son to be the Holy One who kept the law you gave to Moses and fulfilled to Elijah and all the prophets the promise of a Savior. Grant to your church the grace to receive your Son with faith, to rejoice in the revelation of your saving glory in him, and to live by the light of his word and the food of his table all of our days. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, from age to age, you gave us glimpses of your glory and to the, fulfill, uh, to the fuller revelation of your Son. Grant to us pastors who will preach the word, the whole counsel of your word, and provide to us faithful pastoral care, which we need. Bless us with church workers to teach our children to do the works of mercy that show forth your love to those in need. We thank you for Jeff Shu, our Salsa Band Director, for the wonderful blessings he is to our children at Trinity and all of our Salsa schools. We also pray for Christina Roberts, her family, and our Savior Lutheran Church in Grand Rapids as Christina and her family prayerfully consider becoming Trinity's new music director. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, all the might of man pales before the demonstration of your power. Bless, we pray, Donald, our president, the Congress of these United States, Tony, our governor, all judges and magistrates. Give them wisdom to fulfill the responsibilities that you have entrusted to them, that justice may be prevail, life may be protected, virtue encouraged, and all people kept safe and secure against the threat of violence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, give to all those in any affliction the comfort of your presence and grace for their every need. Give healing to the sick according to your need, according to your will. Give comfort to those who mourn and give peace to the dying. Especially do we pray on behalf of Beth Hook, who is recovering after foot surgery, Steve living with ALS. Jean, living with pulmonary fibrosis. Liz, living with a neurological condition. For Sandra, Roger, Jennifer, Ruth Ann, Barrett, Bruce, Bernadette, Sue, Ray, Christina, William, and Richard, all in treatment for cancer. For Barb, who is ill. Brandon, in extended physical therapy. Deborah, for continued management for her illness. Alan, living with Alzheimer's disease. Gloria, in declining health. Tom, in physical therapy after surgery. Alan, recovering after back surgery. Daryl, recovering after successful cancer surgery. Sue, recovering after heart bypass surgery. Also for Tess Lipom Stecker, who was in an automobile accident this past week. We also pray for, offer before you the family of Danny Feltz, that's who we remember today, that we may have strength, patience, and peace to bear up the burdens of this life. We also give thanks to you this day for Vivian Marie, da newborn daughter of Josh and Casey Walrich. Lord, in your mercy. All these things, O Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, through whom you have made known to us the mystery of your saving glory. As he has fulfilled all of the law and kept the promise of the prophets, keep us from error, that we may honor your word with an obedient heart and walk in his ways, doing all that is good and right and pleasing your sight. In Christ, with Christ, and through Christ, be all glory, honor, worship, and praise to you, Holy Father, with the Holy Spirit evermore. Amen. Please be seated. As we gather together the offering, we invite you to fill out the friendship register located in the sides of your pews.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection when with all the faithful look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul into life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.